Okay, we're back. We're live. Four o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech, and we're celebrating Think Tech Tech Talks, you know, probably the last one in this year, 2016, mm -hmm. with a very special guest who is related <laughs> to another very special guest. This is Melody Lindsay, a Hawaii girl who is uh, off in Montana, but back for Christmas. Am I right? Yes. Welcome, welcome to the show. A grand total of a week. Yeah, thank you All for right, having well, me. All right, well, enjoy yeah, it. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, um, uh, and your and your uh, your younger brother, Christopher Lindsay, uh, was here like two weeks ago, maybe a week ago, and yeah. he talked about all his stuff. Now we're going to talk about your stuff. <laughs> it's my turn, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, awesome. Iolani in two thousand and nine. Yes. Yeah. I graduated from high school in two thousand nine. Were you committed to science at that time? Uh, I was very interested in science, but. Um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, which is why I would then went to a broader liberal arts college. <laughs> so Called I could Princeton. Have options. Yeah, I went to Princeton. Very, very, for broad, my undergrad. very broad, Yeah, yeah. You have, Best was, college in the country, I think. Yes, yeah. we're number one for yeah. a, good, a good couple of years now. Yeah, the only thing about Princeton is once you go to Princeton, you're always a Princetonian forever and ever. Always. You can never get away from that school. Yes, you have to go back to reunions every year, although I do not. Because and write I don't checks, too, things. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are quite... Um, <laughs> Possessive is the yes. word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they pursue you. <laughs> like good for you, though. What did yeah. you study in Princeton? So my major at Princeton was ecology and evolutionary biology. Um, and I, mi I also minored in music performance. And so uh, we can't double major at Princeton, but I did try my best. <laughs> ecology <laughs> yeah. and music. Yeah. Maybe there's an ecology of music. You, you know, know all these things. Types of music, there's no reason why you can't do it all, Melody. I think That's right, you're yeah. going through the book doing it all. Yeah, as long as you work hard, you can't you can't have it all. <laughs> yeah. So after Princeton, um, you decided to take a PhD in science. Talk about it. Yeah. So um, right right after I graduated from Princeton in 2013, uh, I went straight into grad school. Pretty much a week later, <laughs> um, at Montana State University. <laughs> what held you yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, if you know what you want, you might do as well it. go, go and do it. it. Right, yeah. Exactly. Right, right. I like yeah. that. Um, yeah, I had a week vacation and then I started um, field work for my PhD program at Montana State University, which is in uh, Bozeman, Montana. Um, this is right out of college. <laughs> yeah. You started mm -hmm. your field work for your PhD right out of college. Yeah. There's something unusual about that, isn't there? Yeah, I think, well, I, a lot of people do take time off, but I, 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 the, the program that my advisor had was really attractive and I really was interested in the work that he was doing and so I was gung-ho about it and I said yeah I'll come up yeah why you know, not you know J July it was great be great graduated in June yeah. yeah fabulous yeah. so um, t talk about your research talk about your PhD project yeah so I work with a professor at Montana State University uh, called Dr. Er, named Dr. Eric Boyd um, and he studies a lot of extremophile uh, microbiology, so small organisms that live in extreme environments. Ah. Uh, at least to us humans, we think that they ah. are extreme environments in, you know, 100 degree boiling water or, or up or living in the frozen the tundra of the north or in the Antarctica. When you say extreme, yeah. you mean it's an extreme. The extreme can exists all the time. Yes. It doesn't go from yeah. this extreme to that extreme. It's yeah. always one extreme. It's it's always pretty extreme. Or they live in really high salt, like thirty percent. And salt. what's what's yeah. the underlying point about organisms that live in extreme environments? They must be tough, like yeah. nails. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they seem tough, but if if they live in these extreme environments and you brought them into what we like to live in, which is about seventy two degrees Fahrenheit moderate humidity, low salt conditions, a lot of oxygen. They, they don't like it. Um, they, would, they would die. In fact, many of the organisms that I study and that Eric's lab studies are called um, anaerobes, and so they don't like oxygen at all. They cannot survive where there's oxygen. Yeah. But you'll find them in these extreme environments such as the boiling pools of Yellowstone because there is very little oxygen there, so they really love it. What can we learn yeah. from that? Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, so the reason why we do a lot of this research is to not only understand how life works on Earth, how these extreme uh, microorganisms and this extreme life exists and inhabits Earth, but we eventually Space. want to <laughs> look for it in an astrobiological context. So mm -hmm. in astrobiology, um, in a non-Earth environment, because we currently have a sample size of one for life in the universe and it's Earth, um, when, when we look for life on other moons, other planets, extra solar, extra solar system life, then those are the kind of environments that we're expecting to see. And we can already see those type of environments, such as the um, subsurface ocean on Europa or Enceladus, the moons, um, and then also on Mars when you have like this, these ice at the polar, um, 
polar regions of Mars and also the water that was recently found kind of coating the Martian landscape. So, so now it. you're into mm, space, uh, yeah. <laughs> HIGP, Hawaii Institute of Geophysical and Planetology kind of stuff here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. it's important for scientists such as myself and the my advisor, Eric Boyd, um, the uh, kind of extremophile microbiologist, to work with other people, with, to collaborate with other scientists looking for these types of environments, these types of exoplanets, or, you know, ast by astro astronomy Your research. Your brother in Chris general. discovered an exoplanet. Yeah, I guess did. you heard about yes. that. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, very, I'm so proud. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if that's exactly where this field is going and why it's important that we all collaborate within. How do you collaborate from Montana? It's kind of remote, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a little remote. Um, we're, we're pretty, we're more accessible than one might think, though. Um, we can drive, we can fly places, um, <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes if the snow doesn't get to us. But uh, we, we do a lot of Skype calls, um, a lot of video chatting, so it's very e easy to use that these days to collaborate. So in your PhD, yeah. what, what are you seeking in your PhD? I mean, if, if we were <laughs> together at the science fair, and I'm sure you were involved in the science fair, <laughs> I, why I I feel actually. not oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, my brother, my brother. Is oh, your brother. Yeah. Okay, but <laughs> for you, life is a science fair. That's right. Yeah, so every day, <laughs> if we were involved in a science fair discussion, I would ask you, you know, what what is the nature of your research? What what is your mm, your hypothesis? What is it for your PhD? Yeah, so for my PhD, I, this is getting a little pretty. This is getting pretty specific. But in general, I I look at the adaptations that allow life to flourish in the environments on hot springs of Yellowstone National Park as well as in the um, in Great Salt Lake in Utah. So I'm looking at thermophiles, so the heat-loving microbes, and also the halophiles, so the salt-loving microbes. And um, for the Yellowstone work, I have several different projects out of each um, environment uh, for the Yellowstone All work. related to your PhD? Yes. Wow, uh, yeah. the, the very broad-based, uh, diverse yeah. uh, subjects for your PhD. Yeah. So my thesis work is actually is out of Yellowstone, of which we have this wonderful background which is so cool. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but um, so I'm investigating the influence that geological hydrogen has on the microorganisms that can eat this hydrogen. So are these microorganisms powered by hydrogen, and how do they use it? And so that's what I'm interested in. We don't in. know the answer yet. You have to find out. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. I'm looking primarily at their distribution and how they differ across the hot springs in Yellowstone. So just for guys like me who, you know, I, I didn't study science much, but I'm studying it now, mm -hmm. is what is geological hydrogen? What is that exactly? So, so there are several, several sources of geological hydrogen. So hydrogen, when you think of hydrogen, you're going to think of something that may have been in, or that we use as fuel, for example, these, these days in this new generation. Um, but it's, it's, it's the same stuff, really. But we're looking at the hydrogen that is produced from the Earth. And so that can come about in several ways. And Yellowstone is a really great place to look at geological hydrogen because of all the thermal activity. Um, that and um, what that allows is for the water that's in the subsurface that is feeding all these beautiful pools and geysers that you see in Yellowstone, that can interact with the rocks that are present in Yellowstone to produce hydrogen. So yeah. you're in a perfect place for that Exactly. whole conversation, Montana, yeah. Yellowstone, it's all together. Yeah. It's only and a two-hour drive. <laughs> speaking of which, so let's yeah. look at our background picture, uh, and you can tell me, that's Yellowstone. Yeah, I will, so that's a, that's a hot spring Yellowstone. So I what is that? What's going on in that picture? It is. But yeah, so that one, I can probably tell you the approximate temperature and pH of that just by looking at it. Um, that's going to be a fairly, I think that's Morning Glory Pool, actually. Um, I could be wrong, don't. <laughs> um, but uh, that's going to be fairly hot, um, probably around 70 to 80 degrees. And right now, I mean, yeah. the, uh -huh. if you were to Celsius. go in there, it would be hot. You don't want to swim in that. No, no definitely no, no. not. <laughs> and is the water, yeah. the, you assume there's water down below the line of the photograph? Yes, for sure. Yeah, the, so the pool will have, will be almost a circle, likely. Um, and so that water we see is probably a pH of around 7, 7.5-ish, and pretty high in temperature. Pretty high. Um, 70 and 80 and yet Celsius. there's microbes living. Those yeah, the green, microbes the green, love it. That's, yes. that's microbes. Yeah, all the colors that you see in that hot spring are microbes. Um, that's what provides these beautiful colors in these hot springs. Um, and they love living in there. Yeah. So interesting. But you wouldn't find them anywhere else because you need the extreme temperature for them to live. Yeah, they, they will have a specific... Some microorganisms have, have a wider range that they are capable of living at, but these guys um, 
Can, like. can you grow them outside? Can you grow them in the laboratory? Yes. Yeah. How um, do you do that? My advisor's lab. With a uh, skillet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. We have these um, ovens, these the giant ovens that we set at temperatures at like 90 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius. That's hot. And we put them in little bottles and we um, feed them some food. And, and they do fine. And they do fine, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and then you look at them with a the microscope. <clears throat> yes, you can see them under the microscope. <coughs> you do a biochemical analysis of what's going on Yeah, with exactly. Them. Yeah, you can measure their activities. You can see how much they're growing. You can feed them something and tell if they're eating it. So for, for, my, for my work, I uh, will feed them hydrogen. And if the hydrogen in the environment goes down and we can measure the amount of gaseous hydrogen is there, um, then I can say, okay, they're eating it at this rate or they're producing it at this rate. So. You're probably getting the idea that Melody is a devoted scientist. Oh, yeah, I love it. She's not it. fooling around. <laughs> we got some pictures. We don't mess around in the board. We got some pictures of her work yeah. <laughs> and some journals so why don't we play them and by the way yeah. <laughs> footnote to all of this is that melody is also a super duper photographer oh okay yeah. <laughs> and she's won uh. awards on photography and she's also a harpist and i you know i'm trying to sort of develop a kind of solar system of science <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> microbiology microbiology yep. and then harp and then uh, it all connects I yeah know no things. i mean i it's all things that I love to do, and when I need a break from one, I'll go spend some time with another one. If, you know, I love normally, that. I don't need a break from. We should all have that. <laughs> we should all have that. Yeah, it's, it's okay. What about a, what yeah. about a, a photograph? What is that? Okay, so this is an exhibit in the Natural History Museum of Utah, which is in Salt Lake City, and this is of not my thesis work, but actually of some of the projects that I've got or and Eric has got going on in his lab that are looking at the microbialites, which are. Um, if you dissect the word microbialite, it's a microbe plus light, which is rock. So it's a rock that's built by microbes. And so they might kind of look like uh, toadstools or little mud pats of some sort, but they're actually this calcium carbonate rock that is built by these certain species of microbes living in the Great Salt Lake. Yeah, you know, we talked about that before yeah. the show began, and I'm really fascinated yeah. with it. Okay, so cool. do, do yeah. the microbes give their lives to build the rock? I mean, are there microbes left after the rock is built? Yes, so um, that's a theory uh, that is um, kind of, it's, it's one of the theories in geobiology. It's like this builders versus tenants, um, and a, a bunch of other people have come up with this theory, but it's um, what we're, we're trying to investigate with these rocks is who actually built the structure versus who's living in there now, because there are microbes that live there now, and mm -hmm. we're just, oh, in the we're rocks. just here. Like, yeah. okay, we came in because there happened to be a rock here. Yeah. That's great, uh, versus the microbes that actually physically built and but, precipitated the rock structure. But, but you're sure that microbes still did build the rock? We're, we're fairly certain, yes. <laughs> How do you know that? I mean, what kind of analysis is there? So in the Great Salt Lake, um, well, there's several kinds of analysis, and we've got some ongoing to really have the smoking gun for, for that theory, uh, for this hypothesis. I love but, this kind of conversation, <laughs> Melody. No, this me is great too, stuff. yeah. <laughs> um, so, but we're, we're working on those right now, actually. But uh, for this, pa for, this um, for the initial study that we, we did out of this um, microbialite, um, environment. Uh, the Great Salt Lake is a very interesting environment. If you've ever flown over the Great Salt Lake, you'll see that it's divided into two. There's a north part and a south part, uh. and the north part is frequently pink. It's a very interesting color, whereas the south part is, you know, a typical... And that's not pollution. That's the natural no, that's, condition that's, of Salt Lake. Well, it's not totally natural, but it, it is natural biology that is causing okay, that okay. color. Um, so what they did is they built a railroad causeway smack in the middle. Well, somewhere in the middle of Great Salt Lake back in the um, 50s. And so what that did was it cut off the north part of the lake from all of the freshwater input coming yeah. in from the yeah. south. Yeah. And so that caused this um, artificial raising of the salinity. So it's about 30% salt in that environment. And <laughs> everything turns great white. experiment. Eh? Yeah, so it's uh, this, <laughs> this um, experiment that was laid out since the 50s. Um, yeah. They actually just recently reopened the causeway, which is kind of interesting. And we'll have to see where that goes. But um, for the purposes of um, the first study, which I, there is going to be another picture regarding that. Um, but we were able to look at the microbial communities from both the north and the south arm microbialites, so those structures. Different. And they're very different. Whoa, yes. wow. In, in particular, um, there were the absence of these cyanobacterial photosynthetic species. So, you know, like a plant will photosynthesize, these guys photosynthesize. Um, and they weren't present in that super salty part, and they were present in the other part. 
And the other part is the place that we think the, these photosynthesizers are actively building these rocks because they're known to do that, these photosynthesizers. So uh, can, I get a, can I get some microbes together to build my house? <laughs> if you had the right ones and then the right do, conditions. It just might take 10,000 years. It would years, take a really <laughs> long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't well, be able to build a wall with that. Speaking of time, we're, we're, we, we, have a, we have a break okay. now, okay? Yeah. So uh, hold that thought. We'll yeah. be right back with <laughs> Melody Lindsay. We're going to talk more about her incredible science. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what is likable about science. We bring on scientists of all ilk, astronomers, physicists, chemists, biologists, ecologists, and they talk about their work and more importantly, they talk about why you should talk about their work, why you should think about their work, why you should like their work. I help them bring out why their work is understandable, why it's meaningful, why people should care about it, why people should support science. We have a good time. We talk about current uh, events of interest. We talk about uh, historical events sometimes. We dig deep into their research, why they do, what the joys and delights and frustrations of their work are. and. In all, we, we show a, a real world of science, a real world of likable science. I hope you'll join us every Friday at 2 p.m. Bingo, we're back. And the first question on the test is, what show is this? The answer is Think Tech. And I'm Jay Fidel. That's Melody Lindsay. We're talking about science in the pure sense in Montana, about Yellowstone. Let's look, look at more pictures. <laughs> Okay, yeah. what is that? Yeah, so this is um, the cover of the journal Geobiology, which is an online journal, but they have they still have covers, uh, which is really great. And this is a picture of, as the title says, modern microbialites in Great Salt Lake, which is the focus of um, my one of the focuses of my advisor's lab, and we study these rock-like kind of gooey um, <laughs> <laughs> rocks <laughs> that are um, in Great Salt Lake. You know? yeah. That's not uh, that's not water, is it? Oh, that, that I see other, in that uh, picture. Yeah, that is water, and it's it hot, is, hot water. It's no, it's it's fairly ambient, but uh, so this this one is hot. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, so, hot. Okay. But in the previous picture, that's just really salty. It's okay, and this is salt. now this is Yellowstone. Yeah, so this is Yellowstone. This is one of my favorite spots in Yellowstone, um, and you can see that there's this wonderful hot spring, which is the focus of my studies. Then you have a, them dotted across the landscape there, and then you've got a whole bunch of bison, which frequently pose in oh, issue perfect. for. <laughs> um, and then you got the colors, work. the colors in the uh, in the in the ground there. That's got to be uh, microbes, no? Yeah. So the colors that you fr will frequently see in a hot spring are um, a lot of the times are microbes, and that kind of yellowish stuff that you yeah. can see in the outflow channel yeah, there. Yeah. Th those are microbes. And what I think is fascinating about hot springs usually is if you take a and if you've ever been to Yellowstone, you'll, you know that there's bison, there's elk, there's some moose sometimes, wolves. Yeah. Um, there's more um, diversity present in that hot spring, which seems so uninhabitable, um, more diversity of organisms living there than the, all of the macrofauna or all of those large animals and plants that you can see so easily. This is great for an ecology person like yes. yourself. Yeah. Try to figure out what that ecology is like and how the parts relate. Exactly. Okay, next yeah. picture. Is that you? Oh, so we're, yeah, well, this is back. <laughs> this is back in Great Salt Lake. This is me after a day of field work. No, <laughs> this is me super excited to be providing the scale for this microbialite, which is a pretty hefty microbialite. It's huge. It's 10, 10 feet in diameter. It's one of the largest I'd ever seen, so I decided to lay down on it and take a picture. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, we always have to have something for scale. Beautiful picture. pictures you got here. No yeah, kidding. No, it's it's a phenomenal place to work. Oh, yeah. This one too. What is so this? This is this is not a site that we sample at per se, but it is pretty much known as the flagship hot spring of Yellowstone National Park. And so this is Grand Prismatic Spring. Um, I'm standing on a boardwalk right now, and you can see um, the, so the different colors that you can see here. You can you go from kind of bluish in the center of the hot spring where all the steam is, to green, to the yellow again, and then to orange. Um, those are all these different, the, all of the microbes that are living in the hot springs. And then you get to this brown, which is kind of this more photosynthetic stuff that lives on the How edges. delicate is that ecology? If I put a, a pair of hiking boots on and I walked across it, yeah. would, you, would you be offended in <laughs> oh, some way? Oh, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but mostly the park service would be. But they no, it's, like it's, that at all. They, are, they are treasures. These hot springs are so unique. Um, they're irreplaceable. And there is a lot of damage that does get done to them. There was recently a crazy group of people that went out and stomped all over that oh, spring, which is, oh, oh. 
Yeah. But, and, and it does damage. It's not that yeah. this, this does not recover so quickly. It, this has been there for a long time yeah, in exactly that configuration. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's been there for a while. And especially when you see kind of the silica that builds up or something, that took a long time to accumulate yeah, and to yeah. form that environment and that particular structure. That's yeah. our last picture. And I want to yeah. go now to your travels. You've been yeah. <laughs> at your very young age. You've been to a lot of places in the world. Can you yeah. talk about it? Yeah, I'm very fortunate. And actually, um, the, fir the first one I guess I'll, I'll talk about is the, one of the reasons why I got into the PhD program and the research that I'm currently doing now with Dr. Eric Boyd at Montana State University. And the way I met Eric and the way I got started with this PhD program was we met at the American Geophysical Union Conference, which is in San Francisco. Just happened two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. I didn't make it this year. Oh. I'm kind of bummed We had a couple of shows. That. You have yeah. to look at our Think Tech shows. Okay, yeah, I'll okay. check that out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love EGU. I just didn't make it this year. They have an early abstract in there. Um, but I met uh, my advisor at one of these conferences for the work that I was doing as an undergrad at Princeton with yeah. uh, Dr. Tullis Onstott, yeah. uh, who works with, um, he has many different sites and many different projects, but the project that I was working on was on the microorganisms that inhabit the deep subsurface um, biosphere that is accessible through the mines of South Africa. So the gold, diamond, platinum mines that are down so there. So you went there. Yeah, so I was really fortunate to get funding to go there, and I got to go into the mines and do some sampling and help out with their sampling. Was it dangerous? Um, <laughs> it's a little hard to say no to that <laughs> because, well, the first thing that comes to mind is when we would go down um, fairly early in the morning and we'd do all our work and then we'd get a warning from the mine um, personnel who were saying, you got to get out of here because we're about to blow up the tunnel. Um, so that was... Uh, we, you don't want to be in the tunnel. No, <laughs> we got out of there. Um, and then there, at the time, I'm not sure if this is the case now, but there were there was some <laughs> definitely some tension between the mine workers and the uh, police force in South Africa. So was Leonardo there? DiCaprio? <laughs> in <laughs> Blood <laughs> Diamonds wasn't that his movie? Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it's a good thing I didn't watch. <laughs> Where else have you been? <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, my field work takes me to um, Yellowstone and to Great Salt Lake, which are fairly accessible from Bozeman, Montana. You just throw everything in the car and you drive there. Um, it's but all also, outdoors what you do. It's always outdoors. Huh? Yeah, no, it's, it's really great, especially in the summer, although my favorite time is in the winter. Um, it's no tourists and it's pristine and beautiful and... It's white snow everywhere. You're looking oh, forward stunning. to getting back. Yeah, I, I like the snow a lot. Yeah. Although I'm from here as well. Yeah, and so I've also been to um, Alaska for a little bit of work. Um, although that's where <laughs> research is very much still ongoing. Um, yeah. But the main site. It's cold are, there too. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. ever been there in the winter. I've only been. In the so, what's your ultimate plan on this? I mean, you've got a lot of things going. You know, from the photography to the yeah. harp to the <laughs> yeah. ecology to the research now for this PhD, and and within the PhD, it's a very diverse set of topics. Um, what's your plan in life? I mean. <laughs> I really like what I'm doing now, but a PhD program can't last forever, unfortunately. <laughs> you can hurt it here on Think Tank. You heard it here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's how it works. All good things yeah. have to come to an yeah, end. That's yeah, that's true. But, you know, if one, one door closes, another one opens. Um, so what I'd really like to do is to stay in academia. I really love the research that, research that I'm doing. Um, so that is the ultimate goal, is to keep doing this type of research and to keep answering the questions that I have about the natural world. Um, so um, uh, are you um, going to teach or just do research? I really love teaching. I, I had a year of being a TA. I don't need to TA anymore, but I really love teaching. So, And I, I mentor a lot of undergrads, and that's also yeah. very yeah. fulfilling. So, Are you tough? I, I would say yes. <laughs> tough in what <laughs> sense? Oh, as a teacher. Yeah. I gave them a lot of tough love, but deep down they all did really well, so I didn't have to be too tough. I think they did well, yeah. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about <laughs> yeah. uh, science in in this country. Yeah. Uh, you you've had plenty of contact with it. You're involved yes. in it. Yeah. Um, you're digging deep uh, in it, literally, <laughs> literally, maybe in some <laughs> yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, and I I'd like to know you know wh what your feeling is about the scientific community, you know, coast to coast, including Hawaii. Yeah. I like to know uh, how you feel about the the way in which scientists collaborate, the way in which they train, yeah. the way in which they relate to their schools. Um, and the funding. So talk yeah. to me about the scientific community in this country. 
Yeah, so I think I think that especially with the eve of technology and like we discussed before, the ability to collaborate over long distances and with whoever you want via Skype or other technologies is really important and it's really going to aid um, now and in the future um, for scientific endeavors because all of like astrobiology and microbiology, especially environmental micro microbiology, is a very collaborative process. You need to have experts from all different sides. You have to have the geologists, you have to have the microbiologists, you have to have the chemists. And so in order to do work like what I do and what um, the lab that I'm in does, you have to be able to um, collaborate in this interdisciplinary way. And I think we're really, it's, it's taken off. It's, and it's, the it's interdisciplinary great. can will be across the miles. Yes, it's not you're not sure. going to find the, the people you're collaborating with right next door. No, they might yeah. be on the other side of the country. Exactly. And I mean, especially in a place like maybe Montana, you've, you know, you'll have somebody who does one thing here, but then you're going to need somebody who's got a machine over in California or something like that, or they can do so this So how do you work. collaborate that way? Pick up the phone, email, <laughs> you yeah, text of, them, what do you do? A lot of email, um, a lot of email. Um, that's pretty much what we do. I, I um, do a lot of uh, video conferencing as well, so that's helpful. Got to stay in touch. Got to have yeah. these connections where you exactly. can collaborate on papers and uh, research in yeah. general, and then those uh, interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary things, really important. Yeah, and conferences are great for that as well. It <laughs> strikes me, though, that what you learn you know, about the environment, about microbiology in the environment, has got a, it's got an effect beyond just the environment. You're learning yes. about life, right? Yeah. These things are teaching us about everything that's alive in this world. No? Yeah, no, uh, and a lot of facets of science are going to do that as well. If you learn this one specific metabolism that may, um, <laughs> or about this one specific microbe, that could have implications for a whole bunch of things, especially in a field like astrobiology. You never know like how important that's going to be, or you do know how important that's going to be, and then that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, we, ha we have to know these things. Yes. Well, yeah. you tell me before that you can't not know. You have to know. Yeah, you I wake mean, up with questions every day. Yeah, no, it's, it's great because... Um, and my advisor says this as well. Like you, you're you come into work and you're the first person to know what you just found out. Like, and that's that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. um, then you have to write it up and publish it. And that's. <laughs> but it's, so you you think you're going to get rich? Uh, now you had a Davidson Award when you when yeah. you got out of Elani, and that that helped you for a while. I yeah, suppose. no, the Davidson Fellow Laureate Award um, really helped in my initial education. I got in in heart performance, but. Um, I still play the harp, which is which is great. But of course, I do both now. I do yeah. both science and music. Um, so, how are you going to support yourself going forward? Uh, hopefully, I'll keep getting grant money. <laughs> getting grants and scholarships now. Yeah, no, I was fortunate this year to get a NASA Earth and Space Science Fellowship. Uh -huh. They were very generous, and that's a one year, but perhaps renewable up to three so, years. So and this program is associated with NASA that yes. you're working on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the the next question I want to put to you is. Um, you know, we have a new president-elect here, and yes. uh, we have a new government coming soon, and they have ideas that are different than previous administrations, and they're going to shovel it up a little bit and change things around. And if I were a scientist, I would be worried about future funding. Yes. Are you worried about future funding? Um, I mean, right now I'm, I'm very fortunate to have funding, but in the future, in the next four years, perhaps up to eight years, it, it could be... It, uh, it's not, it's not the best um, prognosis. I would, I would think, yeah. um, especially for climate research, um, yeah. especially for earth sciences, yeah. and that that is what scares me the most because we're kind of at a tipping point in our society and on this planet. And in order, and I know the president elect has said, oh, we're gonna you know go back to these space missions, but. To, to, in order to do stuff like that, we first need to understand what we what we need to know about. We need to know more about our our sample size of one that we have of life so far, and we need to study the Earth, and we need to keep track of that, for not just for climate, but just for Earth Earth science in general. You know, he's watching. Uh, oh, no. He's watching on camera one over there, <laughs> and uh, you have the opportunity to talk to him I already now. have my fun. Melody Lindsay away. would like to address the president-elect, Donald J. Trump. What would you tell him about science in this country in his administration? What's your advice to the president-elect? You cannot delude yourself into thinking that this research is unimportant and that the, the problems that we're facing do not exist because they do exist. 
you know, you need to go and read the, raw, the, the papers that have been peer reviewed and are in reputable journals and not just read, you know, all this, I forget what it's called, but this bad, this bad news has been popping up. And maybe, maybe you do realize that, that it's, you know, real and you're just trying to not have that for your, for your voters. But you're about to be president. You're going to be a president. You can, you can do whatever, you know, not whatever you want, but you can do, you can help the situation. You don't have to keep the act going, I guess, is what I should say. I don't know if he knows that, but yeah. <laughs> I, I okay, I'm, I'm sure he, I'm sure he's listening yeah. and maybe I'm that'll get have an some angry effect. I'm tweet, but luckily I'm not on Twitter. No, it's so. okay, okay, but you know, <laughs> let me, let me say, we've learned today that Melody Lindsay can do anything she wants whatever turns her on whatever the inquiry might be yep. and the, you solve that one go to the next one and maybe somewhere along the way melody you'll go into politics what do you think uh, maybe i mean if you go high enough high up, <laughs> high up enough in nasa you could you could be a science advisor or something i would you know i'll, I'll tell i'll tell them what i really feel if i were science advisor i would i would say exactly what i just said perhaps with a little more uh, <laughs> yeah. Melody, you're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks, thanks so for much for coming me. on yeah, the show. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> been a pleasure. You know, I hope oh. I do get an angry tweet. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Melody. Yeah, no. <laughs>